Welcome to Good Life, the health show with me, Pooja. Well, this is a show that focuses on providing you with solutions to your health-related issues, lifestyle, and much more. Well, viewers, today we are being joined by senior orthopedic Dr. John Mukhopadhyay. Dr. John Mukhopadhyay is the director of the Department of Orthopedics and Trauma at the Paris HMRI Hospital, Patna. He has more than 30 years of experience in complex orthopedic problems and has performed tens of thousands of successful surgeries. He takes keen interest in complex injuries and neglected trauma. So, let's hear in from the man himself about orthopedics and more. Well, doctor, thank you so much for joining to Good Life, the health show today. So I would like to ask you at first regarding orthopedics. Why orthopedics and nothing else? Thank you for having me on this show. Uh, the reason why I went into orthopedics is a little hard to explain. Uh, you may be aware that my father was an orthopedic surgeon and was one of the people who started orthopedics as a specialty right. in India. Uh, but when I grew up, I wasn't so keen on doing medicine, leave alone orthopedics. So when I was in school, I still wasn't sure I wanted to do medicine. Then as it happened, just after school, we had the exams for uh, the medical college entrance and I did the JIPMA Pondicherry exam mm. and managed to get through. Uh, JIPMA and CMC Velo were the only two colleges which took you straight after school, that is okay. your ISC or your higher secondary in those days. Mm -hmm. uh, you didn't have to do one year of pre-med, which you had to do for all the other medical colleges. Okay. So once I joined uh, medicine, then again, during my period as a medical student, I wasn't sure about orthopedics, but gradually I started getting attracted towards orthopedics with the kind of problems that you saw around. Mm -hmm. And uh, I felt that this was an area where we could do some good work to improve the situation of, especially the neglected sort of cases we were witnessing in those days. Okay, okay. Now, so, uh, doctor, like it's been three decades in this uh, field. So how has been your journey so far? What would you like to tell? So I think uh, when I, I, I did my training mostly outside Patna. So I did my medicine in Jipma, then I went to England. Okay. I worked there, I did my fellowship and my MCH there before I came back to Patna. Mm -hmm. And so in the 30, more than 30 years that I've been in Patna since then, uh, Things were not very easy in the beginning because everything I did used to be compared to what my dad did, etc. Okay. But over a period of time, uh, people started seeing the results that I was able to give for some of the very difficult uh, problems in those days. And gradually, patients started having that belief and trust in me. Mm -hmm. And they were coming from various re regions, not just from Patna or Bihar, but from areas around like the uh, Bengal, Northeast, Nepal, Eastern UP, etc. So, mm -hmm. so it, it was something which grew gradually over a period of years. it's an ongoing journey. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. All right, Doctor, now if we talk about the elderly people, now we are talking orthopedics. So if we talk about the elderly people, what makes elderly people more prone to injuries and uh, fractures? What is the reason behind it? Okay, so there are many reasons behind it. One mm -hmm. of them is the fact that as you get older, your bones get weaker. Uh -huh. So what we call osteoporosis or osteopenia, where your uh, bones tend to get weaker with age. Okay. So that is one. The second thing is, uh, as you get older, your sense of balance starts deteriorating. Uh -huh. Okay, so you tend to trip or fall. Mm -hmm. uh, many people live in homes which are not really designed for uh, avoiding trips like you have a rug lying around mm -hmm. or a, a carpet somewhere, uh, stair suddenly that comes up in the middle of the thing and the elderly especially when they get up at night they are not fully aware of their surroundings okay. and then they are much likely to, much more likely to fall over. Okay. They also very often on medications maybe for whatever reason which can mm. alter their conscious status so whether it makes them a bit drowsy etc not conscious and, properly yeah and mm -hmm. that again will lead to fall so there are multiple reasons mm -hmm. but the reason they break it whenever they fall is the fact that most of them lose the texture of their bone as they get older okay okay now uh, what are the difficulties you face while treating elderly people are there any difficulties and what are those yeah. 
So there are many issues involved in these fractures. Okay. Uh, the most common or the most the biggest problem are fractures around the hip, mm -hmm. which could be in two different parts of the hip usually, either just where the femur bone joins the acetabulum, which is what we call the neck femur, or just slightly lower down, which is in the trochanteric region. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, because it is age-related, these patients also have other problems. So they may have uh, coexisting cardiac problems, renal problems, mm -hmm. blood pressure, diabetes. Mm -hmm. So a number of comorbidities may be there. Mm -hmm. And the combination of the fracture which puts them, uh, makes them lie in bed, they can't move around, mm -hmm. and these comorbidities makes it a difficult challenge. Okay, okay. Uh, the idea of surgery is to get them up and about as soon as possible mm -hmm. so that they do not develop problems such as bed sores, urinary tract infection, respiratory infections, etc. Mm -hmm. But surgery has a certain amount of risk. But in these fractures, especially in the elderly, the risks of not doing surgery are actually higher than if you operate on them in a proper way. Okay, okay. Now, if you're talking about surgeries, we have to tell our viewers that uh, you have performed around tens to thousands of surgeries. Now, if uh, any of the experience you would like to share with us, the surgery which you have performed and, and has uh, put an impact on you. So, anything you want to share with our viewers who are watching our show? So, again, an individual case is very hard to... Very uh, hard to tell. But one patient I remember who was mm. actually from the Northeast. Okay. Who had a fracture near his hip, but not a very old patient, but he had an open fracture where the bone had come out. Mm. And then that got infected and he actually reached Patna. He was uh, in a very uh, bad state in terms of his general condition. He was septicemic, his renal functions had got low. Mm -hmm. And that was a patient we treated in those days with really radical debridement, mm -hmm. followed by fixation of the fracture, even though it was an open fracture, because that was the only way to stabilize that fracture okay. and he recovered well and then he was one of those people who used to keep bringing patients back okay. from the northeast and coming okay. so well, he was the one who was the messenger well one of them i mean one of the number. messenger i mean we used to get patients from a long time because uh, when my dad started orthopedics there was very little in orthopedics in this entire region so mm -hmm. patients used to be coming from mm -hmm. there in fact many of the doctors early orthopedic surgeons mm. in the in Bengal, mm. Assam, etc. all trained under my dad in Patna. Okay. Now, uh, if you talk about the Patna city doctor, now people have a notion or people, we said that they have a lot of faith in the Patna city when it comes to ortho-related problems and we see them rushing to uh, Patna to, for the treatment. Now, do you think that uh, why is it so and is there a difference of treatment there or what is the reason behind it? Why are people so much confident that uh, if anything related to ortho problems are there, we have to rush to Patna. So what is the reason? So again, this is a difficult question to, so people from Patna rush out of Patna sometimes. Okay. So okay. It's, it's hard to understand why, uh -huh. uh, especially for orthopedics, people come to Patna, but part of it is historical. Mm -hmm. Because from my dad's time, people would come because at that time there was uh, not much in the terms of orthopedic facilities here. Mm. But uh, the other was when patients had treatment here and things went wrong and then we were able to get it right. So then next time they would not get the treatment here and come directly there. Okay. But there's really no need for most most patients most, to most come patients, there. Most patients, huh? I think now the uh, infrastructure here is as good or better than in Patna. Mm. You have enough doctors who are well trained. Mm -hmm. So I think in the initial period, there's really no strong reason for them to come to Patna for treatment. Okay. Of course, for some of the complications, it's a different uh, thing mm -hmm. altogether. Okay. Doctor, my next question to you would be like, uh, people resort to indigenous medicines and come with a complicated <coughs> situations with old fractures. So uh, how do you deal with these issues? So this was again a big learning process okay. because uh, when we started on these old fractures, treating them with surgery, etc., mm -hmm. there was very little guidelines as to how you dealt with them. So mm -hmm. many years ago, if patients came too late, they would just leave them and mm -hmm. give them some kind of brace or something to manage to walk around. Mm -hmm. But then we were able to start operating on some of these very old complex cases and uh, getting fairly good results. And so that encouraged you to do it further. Uh, the literature is still not very uh, sort of uh, clear about the best treatment for many of these situations. Mm -hmm. So it was something that we learned the hard way through uh, sort of uh, 
doing it and then looking at our own problems and uh, also the better results which when we were able to get them to be able to mm -hmm. decide which ones we could do something for and which ones were probably better left alone. So does this also put a challenge for you as well because uh, if uh, this is a problem which is being complicated, the complicated situation which arises to you, so there might be such kind of problems also, a challenging situation also for you. So on that note, how do you handle those uh, challenges? So like I just said, it's a question of having experience with dealing with these problems. Mm -hmm. And once you have experience, then you can have a certain amount of confidence in saying that you can make it better. Mm. Of course, you have to be selective, you have to explain uh, the prognosis very clearly to your patients and their attendants that mm. this is the best we can expect in this situation. Mm. And once they understand, then they can make, it's like an informed decision, it's not a one-sided decision in those cases. Mm. So I think there are a lot of uh, these late cases or complications that we have been able to deal with. I can't say we have 100% results, but we are able to get many of them better from what they were when they came. Okay. And it's time now to slip into a short break, but do come back soon because we have lots more on the other side. Welcome back viewers, you're still watching Good Life, the health show with me, Pooja. Now, Doctor, talking about Northeast, how do you uh, choose uh, to s provide service to Northeast? Like, <coughs> what was the reason and how is the journey? So, I think, like I said, it was uh, the patients who would come from the Northeast mm. to us for treatment and then we were treating a lot of them and then many of them were not able to come back for the follow-up. So, my first reason initially to come here was to catch up on the patients we had treated but okay. were not able to come for follow-ups uh -huh. to see how they were doing etc. Uh -huh. Then, uh, so once this Pratiksha thing, they got me involved with their clinics coming two or three times a year. Uh -huh. And then they had this idea, especially Dr. Pramod Sharma and a group of surgeons here that they wanted to build a special orthopedic uh -huh. Uh, oriented hospital which is this chorus to provide shop, proper service to be able mm -hmm. to so I initially was just going to come occasionally but then they wanted me to be involved a little more closely with it mm -hmm. and now the idea is to be able to train people and also build up their own practices okay, okay so I, uh, the idea is that not that I keep coming here and doing mm -hmm. things but the people here are able to deal with whatever the complex problems are themselves. Mm. Okay, so uh, there might be a lot of a uh, good team around you because uh, you, as yourself, you have said that you have to train a lot of people on this because uh, the patients who come from a long way to get themselves treated will have to be uh, go and go through with the fruitful results as well. Now, with those fruitful results, uh, what are their complications or whatever the complications they come up with? Maybe the situation which arises near you must be very much difficult for you and your team to get rid of it. Now, on that note, uh, what kind of like suggestions do you give those, those patients and their attendants as well? A counseling kind of thing is also very important for them, isn't it, doctor? Yeah, absolutely. So that's mm -hmm. why I said it's an informed mm -hmm. decision. You need to tell them what the problem is. You have to be careful of what you tell them because yeah. when someone else has treated the uh, uh, patient and things have gone wrong, you have to be very careful not to incriminate what has been done before. Mm -hmm. At the same time, tell them there are solutions and also what the limitations of those solutions are. Okay. So once a patient comes late, it's very rare that you can make them completely normal. Mm -hmm. okay? But you have to get them better from what they would be mm -hmm. otherwise. So proper counselling is very Absolutely. important for them, isn't it? Now, Doctor, if we want to know about uh, what are these complex injuries and neglected trauma, if you would put some light on this as well. Okay, so complex injuries are fractures which uh, are not easy to treat. Let's put it that way, okay, simple. Okay. okay. So especially when there are in, uh, fractures which involve joints, mm -hmm. which are grossly displaced. Okay. There are certain areas like the acetabulum, mm -hmm. Uh, which uh, not everyone operates on because there are certain okay. risks in operating in that okay, area. Okay. And when you have multiple injuries, so that means you have a fracture in one part of the bone, but you also have fractures in other parts of the bones. Hmm. Then the treatment becomes more complicated because one fracture will compromise on what you do for the other fracture. Okay. 
because you can't use the same treatment which you would use for a standard mm -hmm. femoral shaft fracture if you also have a fracture around the knee or the hip. Oh. So those are the really complex ones and also when patients have what we call polytrauma where multiple mm. uh, systems are involved. Okay. So that is a completely different uh, situation where they ju don't just need orthopedic treatment but they need a multi-specialty approach with mm -hmm. the intensivists, the uh, emergency medicine, mm. surgeons, neurosurgeons, everyone involved in the planning for the treatment. Okay, so how long does this entire procedure takes if the person is have to have these two multiple kind of like treatment and regarding the injuries we are talking about, the critical injuries we are talking about. So is it a long process or depends on the patient as well, depends on the case as well? It, yeah, it depends on uh, multiple factors, mm -hmm. the patient himself, his general condition, okay. what are the types of injuries he's got, how critical is he when he came in, mm -hmm. uh, and the amount of time would vary according to that. So, But the risks of him surviving the injury mm -hmm. is actually de determined in the first few days of treatment. Mm -hmm. Okay, So they talk about the golden hour, the silver day, so if you get the golden hour was something which was uh, uh, coined by Dr. Abraham Cowley okay. about uh, when you have major injuries mm -hmm. that one hour if the patient gets appropriate treatment they can save a number of lives. Ah. Now that is still not possible in most situations in India but there is a concept of silver day where mm -hmm. you do adequate resuscitation of the patient in the first 24 hours and that greatly in increases their chances of survival. Mm -hmm. So you have the golden hour, you have the silver day and you also have the bronze week or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of days yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, those, so these every, are some of the period term. matters uh -huh. because you also have a time when you have this problem with what we call systemic inflammatory response syndrome. Then you have the immunosuppression where infections, a period between sort of uh, after the 14th day where risk of infection goes up. Mm -hmm. and. In these severely injured patients, you can get what we call multi-system organ failure and then okay. it becomes very hard to mm -hmm. get these patients to survive. Okay. So the, your initial treatment is based on preventing these problems, but there are some who are so badly injured that in spite of everything, they will not survive. All right. All right, doctor. Now, uh, if we want to know about, like, you have been providing services as the director of orthopedic chorus as super speciality. So, how have been the experience so far? So, chorus is only just beginning. This hospital is only just <laughs> starting. Uh, but we were in the Pratiksha Hospital, <laughs> and initially it was like I said, we started with just one or two visits a year. Then it grew to a little more. Mm -hmm. But with the advent of this hospital, I hoped and plan to be coming more regularly. Mm. Uh, but the idea here would be to have the correct infrastructure. So now we have new OTs with all the facilities that you need. Mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, young surgeons who are keen to learn and hopefully they will pick up okay. uh, along the way. And mm -hmm. I, uh, I really see my role more as a mentor than actual, mm -hmm. actually doing the stuff myself in the mm -hmm. long run because I think I'm reaching a stage where I have to think of retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all, <laughs> because uh, guidance would be very much important from your side as well. Now, uh, doctor, if you want to know about the technology part, it has been upgraded a lot. And nowadays uh, we see equipments which can like uh, ease the problems uh, very properly. So if you talk about the technology in your days and now, so how has been the difference? Uh, what have you seen as a difference in the technology part? So I think there have been improvements in various things, mm -hmm. uh, starting from uh, everything in the OR, mm. the, with the anesthesia, the monitoring equipment, the imaging. To everything. Yeah. So how do you image patients? Mm. We also have uh, computer assisted guidance, navigation, and eventually robotics in mm -hmm. the long run. Mm. Uh, but um, eventually, I think you still need the patient surgeon or patient doctor relationship to be at the center of it all mm. because you can't uh, convert medicine into just uh, something which a robot does and mm. the, uh, so it's not 
exactly the same as many other things where okay, okay. I think the patient doctor relationship is also a very, very important, important. Part. of course because if you provide the medicines and treatment F and if the same is not being like uh, taken properly by the patient then things would become worse as well now doctor if would, I would like to ask you about your plans regarding the orthopedic problems in the people of Northeast so uh, how do you plan to make them better like any plans so I think there are various aspects to it. First is the prevention. Mm -hmm. So that is to do with education, dissemination of knowledge, okay. uh, patient awareness. Mm -hmm. They need to understand how they can prevent falls, prevent osteoporosis or treat ospo osteoporosis in the right time so that their bones don't become so weak that they'll break. So that's okay. the preventative aspect. Uh, designing of homes, bathrooms, a lot of these elderly mm -hmm. patients fall in the bathroom. That's ah. a very common place for people to fall and break something. Okay. So mm -hmm. I think all that will be part of education and that is not something that uh, we just as orthopedic surgeons can do. Everyone mm -hmm. has to be involved, the whole, mm -hmm. uh, all other doctors, the general physicians, the mm -hmm. uh, people who are providing home services. Mm -hmm. The administrators, they all have to be involved. The in idea that. is to aware people Awareness, uh, how etc. possible so that's, it can be. So first thing mm. is with that. Mm. Then is early treatment. So, I mean, when you have a fracture, a lot of people still go to bone setters. Okay. And you would be surprised that some of them actually get better. That's why they go to them. Mm -hmm. But they ha you have to differentiate between those fractures which might get better with just mm -hmm. uh, sort of uh, treatment. treatment with bone setters mm. or that which really needs something more uh, uh, sort of critical in terms of, uh, so especially with articular inju injuries that involve joints, etc. Mm -hmm. The chances of them getting stiff if they have treatment under a bone setter is very high. Okay, okay. So I think you need to, and then of course the polytrauma patients, you have to have proper hospital based. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things has to be taken care of. Now, Doctor, we are really short of time. So what tips and suggestions you would like to give our viewers who are watching our show? So for viewers, I think it's, uh, Two things, one is be aware of what the preventative aspects of orthopedics are. Right. Make sure that you lead a healthy lifestyle. That means adequate exercise, diet, uh, avoid uh, too much alcohol and smoking and things like that. Avoid smoking altogether and not. you have to be careful about what your other habits are. Make sure you do enough exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's the first preventative a aspect of it. Okay. And then, of course, when you have a problem, don't delay uh, consulting a doctor. Mm -hmm. okay, so immediately to, one has to go and Not immediately, but I mm -hmm. mean, you have but at a, least one should every legal you don't have to go to a doctor. But if you have a pain which is mm -hmm. persisting in spite of mm -hmm. your uh, sort of e some exercises or whatever local treatment, mm -hmm. then you need to go to mm -hmm. the appropriate doctor for proper advice. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. John, for giving your time and uh, those valuable suggestions at this point in time on our show, Good Life, The Health Show. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank you very much. It Thank was a you. pleasure. And that's all we have for you in this episode of Good Life, The Health Show. Keep watching Northeast Live. Stay safe and stay healthy.